I'm here at the ISSCR talking with Professor Melissa Little, who is the guest editor of our special issue on organoids. Melissa, why did you decide to come on board? I came on board development for this particular special issue because I think now is a great time uh, for organoids to start to appear in development as a journal. Development is one of the premier journals in development and has been for a very long time. It continues to be high quality developmental biology and developmental biology and stem cell biology really intersect around organoids so I thought this was a great opportunity. So how can organoids be used to study development? I work on IPS derived organoids. I know that's a term that's used more, more widely but with an IPS derived organoid what you have is essentially a model of a human tissue. And this is really the first time we've been able to start to, to dissect human development uh, albeit in vitro, uh, but uh, this is a really wonderful opportunity to actually understand how similar or not uh, those early developmental phases are in the human versus other organisms. There's now a, quite a range of, of mini organs out there, and your lab recently reported making mini kidneys, but how close are these to the adult phenotype? I mean, if you want to use these to model you know, adult diseases and drug development, how similar are they? They're really models of early fetal development and, and that appears to be the case across all of the tissues in which organoids have been derived from pluripotent stem cells. Of course the uh, adult stem cell epithelial organoids are a different story uh, and that's not so surprising. In fact there, there is a kind of time course even in vitro. You can't speed the thing up. In human development you're going to have nine months of development. You can't do that in in, a, in three weeks in a dish. So what are some of the major challenges in the field? I do think maturation of cell types, particularly with the pluripotent uh, stem cell derived organoids. Uh, if, if we really genuinely are going to model disease, we have to be developing maturer cells than we are getting now. Uh, I think the longer term, the really long term challenge is therapy and I get patients contacting me on a daily basis and we're a very, very long way away from that. And uh, I think that bioengineering has to solve some of these problems, but what we have now is the potential to generate the cells that we need. Melissa, not everyone will know this, but I actually did my PhD with you <laughs> in your lab, if you remember, and uh, that long ago. And um, you have been and, and remain a fantastic mentor to me. I'm interested to know, what do you think it takes to be a great scientist? I think it takes curiosity, wanting to know an answer. Uh, I think it takes resilience. Uh, you really have to keep, be willing to keep going. To, to persevere uh, and so there are very few actually uh, personality stereotypes for scientists uh, other than that absolute drive to know and drive to achieve. I remember when I first interviewed with you one of the things you asked me was whether I like cooking. Why do you ask people that question? I still ask people that question. I, I think that biology uh, is cooking essentially, uh, cooking or gardening, I think cell culture is more gardening. I ask because I think there's a number of ways that you can cook. Uh, some people will read the recipe and they won't deviate from it. Uh, and some people cook in a very intuitive way, so their recipe is, is a baseline, but they know enough of, about how to play with that recipe to troubleshoot it and create something new. Um, I don't actually think that one is better than the other, but I think it gives you a better idea of who's likely to be able to troubleshoot and who's likely to be able to innovate and who's likely to be um, a strong, solid supporter and not deviate from the plan. Hmm. So it's just a good way of measuring who you're, who hmm. you're dealing with. <laughs> so it's not just about the cake? But... No, it's not just about the cake. <laughs> Melissa, thank you so much for taking the time. ISSCR is a, is a fantastic but very brutal meeting in terms of scheduling. So thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to the special issue on organoids. And uh, good luck with all the editing. So do I. Thanks a lot, Carol.